Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn how to do plane detection and place a virtual sphere onto a table. So to do this, we're going to take this in two steps. Number one, we got to start and fire off plane detection and this is something that ARKit would automatically do. Then what we do is we tap on the screen, which is a 2D point, and we want a way to convert that 2D point into the corresponding 3D location in the real world. To do this, we will do ray casting. Now let's get started coding. I'm going to start up a new project. I'm going to use the Augmented Reality app template and choose Reality Kit as the content technology. Great. So the app does come with some unnecessary code, template code that we're going to delete. And we're going to start with step number one, which is to fire off plane detection. In this case, horizontal plane detection, because we want to detect surface of a table. So I'm going to write a function for that. Name it start plane detection. So firstly, AR view is the view that renders the AR scene. So I'm going to take the AR view here and firstly I'm going to set automatically configure session to true and then I'm going to set up the configuration for plane detection. So here I'm going to create a variable called configuration. This would be an AR world tracking configuration And it's not detecting it and that's because we have to import AR kit into the project and now if I build it now it works great so next thing I'm going to set plane detection to be horizontal so configuration dodge plane detection equals horizontal and then I'm going to set automatic environment texturing so configuration dodge environment texturing equals automatic and this essentially uh, makes the whole lighting and rendering more realistic and then I'm going to take the AR view and get access to its session and then fire off this AR session to start horizontal plane detection so that's how we start and fire off plane detection I'm going to call that now in the view to load method so step one fire pl off plane detection so start plane detection. Next thing we need to get access to that plane and place a virtual object onto a specific point. So to do that the first thing we need to do is to detect touches on the screen and get the touches 2D location which will convert later into 3D point using ray casting. So get 2D point. So for that we're going to add a gesture recognizer to the AR view so add gesture recognizer and this would be a UI tap gesture recognizer and we're going to use this function and here the target would be self the current view controller and the action this will be the callback function that will be called every time the user taps on the screen selector means it's an objective C function so we need to add selector here and here we would pass an Objective C function. You don't need to know the details, but essentially this interfaces Objective C code with the Swift interface. So here we're going to create an Objective C function, which we'll name handle tap, and this would have an input of recognizer. Now that looks good. Now because it's an Objective C function, we're going to preface this with OBJC, and then below that create the function. We're going to call it handle tap with recognizer as the input which is of type UI tap gesture recognizer this would not return anything and in here again this is the callback that is called every time a user taps on the screen so in here first thing let's get the touch location which is the 2d point touch location so this would be let tap location equals recognizer the input argument there and this would contain the location of the touch and we're going to choose in AR view then what we want to do is take this 2d point and convert that to the corresponding 3d point in the real world so what we can do here then is first run a raycast and what is ray casting? Well, you can think of it like a ray being shot from the camera. And if that ray in the real world intersects with one of the planes that ARKit has detected, in this case, the surface of the table, then it would return a result. 
and in that result you can get access to the specific 3D point and its location corresponding to the place where the user tapped on the screen. And if the ray did not hit one of the planes detected by our kit, say if it hit the wall or say a chair, then it would not return a result. So that's ray casting, a way to convert from 2D point on the screen to a 3D location in the real world. So to do that, I'm going to store the results from the ray cast onto uh, this variable. And I'm going to take the AR view and start a ray cast. So this would be the ray cast and this would be from the 2D point, which is the tap location allowing estimated plane and alignment would be horizontal. We only want to detect touches on the horizontal plane. So the rays would ignore any results from say a vertical plane or a chair or some other object. So next let's check if there is a result. So if let first result to get access to the first plane. So results dot first and this would be the first plane that the ray intersected with. And now we're going to get the 3D point of the touch. And this we'll store under a variable called world position. And this would be the first result dot world transform dot columns dot three. Now we want to turn this into a 3D vector. So we're going to wrap this around this function. And now here essentially we have, we've taken the 3D position from the first raycast result and convert that into a 3D vector. This would give the x, y, z coordinates of the 3D point. So now we know the exact location where we want to place the virtual object on the table. Next, let's create the 3D virtual object, in this case a sphere, and place it there. So to do that, we're going to create another function called create sphere, which returns a model entity. So here, what we want to do is first create the mesh and then assign material to it. And then we'll use this mesh and material to make a model entity, which is needed to add to the ARC. First, the mesh. We're going to name it sphere. We're going to mesh resource dot generate sphere. Let's make the radius 0 0.5. And then we're going to create the mesh material. So sphere material. This would be a simple material. And here we can add the settings. I'm going to choose color blue, roughness of zero, and is metallic true to give it the shiny look. Now that we have the sphere and the sphere material, let's create a model entity out of it. To do that, I'm going to name this sphere entity, make model entity, and this we can create out of a mesh and a material. So the mesh would be the sphere. And the material, in this case, is just one, which would be the sphere material. Great. Now we need to return this model entity. And this is what we'll use to add to the ARC. So this creates a sphere and returns it as a model entity. So now let's go back to our handle tab method. And right after we detect it to the 3D point, let's create the sphere, create sphere. So let's sphere equals create sphere. Now this is a model entity and now we want to place this 3D sphere onto this position. To do that, let's create another function called place object. So we want to place an object which is of type model entity at a location which is defined by a 3D vector, a 3D point. So this would be a simd3 of type float. Now to place a model entity or a 3D model onto the scene, we need to do two things. First, we need to create an anchor. So anchors are like hooks that locks a virtual object onto a specific place in the real world. And you can define a position for an anchor. So we're going to create an anchor. This would be the object anchor. And this would be of type anchor entity. I'm going to create one at a world position. So we're going to place this anchor at the position where we want to place the ball at. In this function it's at location, so we're going to place this anchor at location, which is a 3D point. And then we're going to take our model entity or a 3D model and tie it into this anchor. So this way we're tying the 3D model onto the anchor so that it is immovable from that location. So we're going to take the object anchor we just created and add the model as a child of the anchor. 
So this would be the object. Now number three, we're going to add this anchor along with the attached model onto the scene. So for this, we'll get access to the AR view and get access to its scene and click add anchor. And this would be the object anchor. Great. So this function essentially takes a 3D model and places it at a specific location in the 3D world using an anchor to lock it there. Let's call that in the handle tab method. After we again, after we detected the first plane, we get access to the 3D point where we touched that, and then we create a 3D model, which is the sphere here using the create sphere function, and then we'll place the sphere. So for this, we're gonna use the place object function we just created, and the object here would be the sphere, and the position would be world position. So that's it.